Hi, this is Jeremy Moskowitz, and in this video, we're going to put the smackdown on malware, crypto malware, unknown threats, and general garbage that your users download and put on their computers and make your life a living hell. So let's set the stage here. Of course, there's applications that you've installed for users, and it runs just fine, right? Like Firefox and WinZip and Acrobat. You've installed this stuff, and of course, you want it to run. But what about stuff that users download? Like by way of example, I'm just a standard user. I went to the internet, and I, uh, I found this great website. I'm a standard user, and I found it's called Portable Apps, and I have all these fun apps that I can install, and games, and crap, and I don't know what this stuff is. So I went to this website, and I downloaded this thing called Notepad2 Portable, and I have it right here. Is it a good app? Or is it malware? I don't know, but as a standard user, I can just double click it and oh my gosh, maybe that application is really evil and it's encrypting my hard drive and all my files as we speak. Or if I were to really go evil, there is this thing called Example Ransomware Simulator. You're welcome to find it and try it. It's gonna buzz through all of your docx files and find them all and pretend to encrypt them. Again, standard user can run this application. He downloaded it, that's the deal. How about this video app? Is that okay? Well, actually, I happen to know it's okay. That's good. Uh, may maybe, well, we'll get to that later. How about this other application, Notepad P? I don't know. Are these good apps, bad apps? I have no idea. But a standard user can download them off the internet or bring it on from a USB stick and so on, putting your company at risk because as a standard user, they can just run this stuff. Today's the day where it ends, and here's how we do it. So what we're going to do is to create what's called a new secure run policy. And secure run is a facility of policy pack least privilege manager, and it puts the smackdown on stuff we don't know about. So if you've ever thought about blacklisting or whitelisting, uh, that's a lot of work because you have to blacklist everything you don't want. And in whitelist land, you have to whitelist everything you do want. Well, there's actually a third option. And this is the third option. Secure run gives you the ability to say, if it wasn't properly installed by you, the admin, the secure run member, then just don't let it run. Now, if you have a certain software facility like SCCM or something like that, you could add them as a member and therefore stuff you deploy through your third party software deployment tool would also be a secure run member. But the guy, the end user who's downloading that crap, he's not a secure run member. So all we got to do is one click later and that's it. We've now put the smack down on all unknown threats that are executable. So let's run GP update real fast right here. We'll wait for it to end. And of course, group policy would apply the first time you log on or in the background. I'm just using GP update to accelerate the hands of time. And by the way, if you're not a group policy shop and you want to use SCCM or something like it, you can certainly do that. We have other videos on that too. And that's it. So 10 seconds ago, we saw that we could run WinZip because you properly installed it and you're on that list. But what about example ransomware and Notepad2? Well, let's go ahead and try it. Boom. You've blocked the application because the person is not part of that secure run list. So what's happening underneath the hood? Actually, let's just prove a point. Example ransomware, that's dead. Killed example ransomware. How about can play this good video player. Well, that's that's a problem because we actually want to run this video player and Notepad P. Well, well, oh gosh, so it's blocked all unknown threats, but stuff that you said is okay, that stuff will still run. So what's happening underneath the hood? I want to explain it because I think it's actually really awesome. What we're doing is we're saying, let's take a look at WinZip by way of example. Properties, go to security and look at the owner. You can see that the owner here is the system and the system is on that secure run list. So therefore it runs. Let's take a look at uh, Notepad2 Portable, something that user downloaded off the internet. When they download off the internet, well, who owns it then? Let's take a look, Security, Advanced, and the owner is East Sales User 1, the person who downloaded it. And because they're not on the list, that application will not run. It's as simple as that. Let's take this one step further. Let's say we, we get the memo. We've, we've made it a little too secure. We want to let cam play run. Well, that's great. We can do that. We'll go back to least privilege manager, add a new executable policy. We can use a simple rule. We can do this by name or by hash or by signature. I'm going to do it just by name. It's not the most secure method, but it's good for this example. I'll go ahead and add a file and I'll say anything star cam play dot exe. That's okay. We'll go ahead and let that run. 
And again, you probably wouldn't want to do it by name. Uh, you probably want to do it by hash or by um, or by publisher, but for the purposes of this demonstration, it's fine. And then I'm going to allow and log. We don't need to run with elevated privileges. We just want to let it run. So we'll go ahead and allow and log. We'll give it a name, let cam play run, but nothing else that we don't know about. And that's it. We'll go back to the endpoint here. We'll run GP update. Go ahead and wait for this to finish. Now that it's finished, we'll close this out. Let's see what happens. How about our ransomware? We never said that's good, so therefore it must be bad and therefore blocked. And what about cam play? Now we said it's good and it runs. So this gives you the ability to put the smackdown on all things the user downloads off the internet unless you say you installed it or you say that it's okay and sanctioned. That's it. That's the end of malware. I hope you like this demonstration. If you're looking to get started with Policy Pack and Least Privilege Manager, give us a buzz and we'll get you the bits. Talk to you soon.